Good day and welcome to the YouTube channel of SA County Network. Um, in this little series, I want to give you guys a tutorial about um, Sage One Accounting and just how to do the basic setup. So you'll see that there should be a series of a couple of videos where I want to cover all the basics with you guys of how to do invoicing on a, on Sage One, how to capture supply payments, how to send out statements, all the stuff that you might need. And if there's maybe additional videos that you guys want, then feel free to comment below and we can see what we can get together for you. But let's start at the beginning. So for the purposes of the demonstration that I want to give you, I created an email account which is called demo at SA County Network and I use that to sign up. And remember, if you are a subscriber to our YouTube channel, we will do your basic setup for free without charging you a cent. So all we need would be your, your email address. And obviously, um, on the, if you look on the SA County Network website, you'll find there's a link over there on that website. Uh, do you will be able to complete with all the details that we will need for your registration. So pop in all the information there and we'll do the basic registration for you free of charge, no cost involved. So let's get down to it and I can show you on my computer how it actually works. So if you are on the computer then obviously we need to sign in into the email account so we're going to be using this one over here and then with the password we're going to go into the <coughs> into the sage one account <coughs> so what will happen is once you have logged into the the screen once we've done the basic registration this is the screen that's going to be awaiting for you so the first thing that you need to do is before you actually even start with invoicing or anything like that there's a step that you need to do first which is very important you need to go to the button at the top that says company and you can see over there which is change company settings so if you click on that little thing over there you'll see that it'll take you to the screen where you can fill in all the basic information about your company so you can see our base did the basic registration over here on the website itself so you can see if your company name is perhaps something else you'll put it in over there the email address that you're going to be using for your company which should be fine your telephone number you can perhaps put your phone number in there so if there's other phone numbers anything like that a contact name you can put in your contact name over there and then addresses you can put in your postal address and your physical address and then once you've completed this screen over here with all the basic information the next button over there on the left hand side is additional company information so you can see this is just stuff that the system requires so it's not really a must that you must have it but you can put your company tax number in there the registered name so if there's a difference between the trading name and registered name you'll put the other number there if you registered with sipsy as a company you would put that registration number in there tax office if it's necessary over there the city in which you're based the province and obviously then the country that you're based in under the customer zone so this is um, a very very nice functionality that sage one has that is, gives it a very big advantage above other accounting systems it's got the system which they call a customer zone so over here, if you activate this little screen over here, your clients would actually be able to see their invoices online and see which payments you've got on your system. Um, you can They can look at the quotes that you've made out to your clients, um, copies of old invoices. So this is a really a game changer, this little screen over here. So if you look at the thing over here, it's this little tick box over there that says enable the accounting customer zone. So make sure that you've got that little tick box, box over there. And you can see over here, they give you uh, options over there to say that the client can only look at invoices and, 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 and quotes or over here invoices and account history so we prefer to click this little block here over there because what happens then is they can actually see all the invoices and the payments that was made out to them you see the display name so you can leave that as it is over there or you can put in another name if it's necessary over there and um, we, you can always look at the Sage Pay option as well so those Sage Pay options you will set that up on those two screens over there. And once you've got that thing sorted out, you can see over there is the buttons for the Sage Pay. Then the next screen you would need to go to your for your general settings where you will set up your financial years. So just to make sure that you're currently trading in the right some financial year. This little button at the bottom of here is once you've completed your financial statements for that specific year, you would actually lock your data so that you can't go back afterwards to go change stuff on the system because otherwise it's just going to mess everything up, you see. Rounding, so if you work with that, you can put it in over there. Regional settings, so if you're based outside of South Africa, you can change your currency symbol over here and the format of your date you can change over there. <clears throat> Here's a little button that says custom and supplier settings. So um, I think most of these boxes 
process are ticked automatically. You see a warn when duplicate customer references is used on invoices, duplicate supply invoice numbers are used, so you can just work through this list and if everything is relevant, you can always update it over there. Item settings, so if you're buying and selling stuff, so this is also very important over here, that um, you need to set this one up. And um, there's one thing that we I'll show you a little bit later that's quite important when it comes to the invoicing, um, when, when we get to that screen over there. Outstanding balances over here, so you can see deselect this option if you want agent to work on the actual number of days. So that is just for you sending out statements to your account, so they can see whether it's on a monthly basis or on a daily basis, the outstanding balances over there. Personal information, you can see over here, um, every time when you log into Sage, it's going to ask you for this little screen over here to say um, how long you want to keep information for. So we normally, just by default, just choose the longest option that you get to say that you want to keep your information for 10 years. And just the reason why you do that, you say that it's for legal purposes, you see. <coughs> Press this little save button and that is sorted out. <coughs> and then uh, let's just quickly see where it's going to take us from here. And um, so we were busy with general settings over there. Um, personal information is the screen that they were busy with. VAT settings, if you are registered for VAT, then obviously your VAT and registration number would go in over here. And you can see on the left hand side of here, it talks about the VAT system, where there's invoice based or payment space. Remember, all companies in South Africa must be registered on the invoice basis as only sole proprietors who's actually registered or that they, they, they are able to be registered on the payment basis. So for now, we're just going to tick the box that says no VAT, so we're not going to worry about VAT processing at the moment. Then you can see the next button over there is documents and statements. So over here, you will get all the different messages that you can complete onto the system over here that will give you the messages in the 30-day line, 60-day line, 90-day line, 120-day line. So if after 220 days, you decide that that's the time when you're going to start taking legal action, then you would actually write in here, say, please pay your account in full, otherwise legal action will be taken, you see. Document numbers, so you can see this is the default that it's starting with, but let's say, for instance, you're changing over from another accounting system over to this one, and your last um, document number for your, your customer invoices must maybe number number 405, then you'll put over there that your next invoice number is going to be 406, then 406, and then after that, and you'll see if you continue with the invoicing from there, it will continue with that number then you see. So if you press the save button, then that invoice number will be saved over there. <coughs> and the next document, which is important as well, or the next setting that we need to sort out over here, is uh, general settings. We were busy with, um, no, we were busy with documents and statements and the document um, messages so you'll see that if you um, put a, a description inside that quote little box over there so that is what would appear at the bottom of the invoice so if you want to say that your quote is only valid for 30 days and that 50 percent um, payment will be seen as the acceptance of the quote and that is the little block we need to put that description in there over there and over there where it says customer invoices that's where you would put the description in and again once more you'll put your new banking details over there and then also in that block over there you would say that the payment is due on presentation or within seven days or 30 days whatever your terms is that you've got with your client you'll put that inside the little box over there now <coughs> Um, so that's also important over there. Um, invoice and statement layout, so you can choose over here. And they've got different um, formats that you can use. And I almost think that there's a button where you can actually choose or see what the different um, layouts look like. We normally prefer, just out of choice, to use a simple layout because that is a real nice basic setup, basic document that you can use just about for everything you see. As soon as you've got too many columns and stuff running around and too many figures, then it just overcomplicates the thing you see. Branding, you can see over here, if you've got a logo, you'll set it up over there, you would say choose file, put the logo inside there, and then you can see over here, you can actually do a preview to say what it would actually look like once it's inside there. Now, User defined fields, let's quickly have a look over here. So if you want to put extra stuff on top of your invoices, this is where that would happen over there. And um, email signatures, so if you want to put a, a signature inside your emails or your invoices when you send it through, um, let's say for instance on the invoice one, you can see this is what the actual invoices look like when you send it through. So it will say dear and then obviously the contact name. Say so please find attached the invoice number for the amount 
please contact me should you have any queries over here you can put your name and your company name so the information that we put in the under the company detail screen this is where it's going to pull through you see so that's quite important over there and i think once you've got this basic setup done then after that we can start working on other things like setting up customers sending out invoices setting out statements and all those type of things so i think once you've got this step sorted out then after that we can start with the rest of the stuff so if you like this video please like our youtube channel and subscribe as well as there will still be many many of these videos coming through thanks Thank you.